Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be taking a look at a program called Make Human. Uh, this is because Make Human just released version 1.1 today, and this is a rare occurrence. The last release of Make Human was almost two years ago, and it, really, it dawned on me that a lot of you have probably never heard of this application, which is a shame because it's completely free and quite powerful. And when I say completely free, this is actually released under the Creative Commons Zero Library a license, uh, which is about as liberal as they get. So here's the news on Game From Scratch, we're going to go through everything here. I just wanted to tell you, the story is posted on Game From Scratch, and I will post this link in the comments down below. Uh, but Make Human is available at makehuman.org. And as I said, today is 1.1 was released, and 1.2 would probably be many years down the road. Uh, but they've done a lot with this release. Specifically, um, here's an infographic showing all the new features of this particular release. And we'll see completely new skeletal and posing system, uh, extended posing library with auto rigging, uh, new skin library with age variations, new expression system based on bone facial rigs, uh, and new, impro um, new improved topology of proxy libraries, uh, improved G GUI usability, uh, etc. And this is a great little application. So let's jump in and take a look at it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is available at makehuman.org. Uh, just go on in, click a download link, and you can either grab the, the nightly versions if you want to walk on the wild side, or just go ahead and grab the, the normal version. It's available for uh, Debian, Mac OS, and Windows, or you can build it from source if you so wish. Uh, source is hosted on Bitbucket. Now, without further ado, let's actually jump into Make Human. Uh, you can just grab the, uh, the download and then extract it somewhere, at least on the Windows case, and run the executable. And I gotta warn you, uh, there's a bit of nudity in advance uh, coming up. So if you are offended by nudity and you click yes to this, you are going to see um, genitalia potentially, uh, digital genitalia, but I'm not gonna black bar anything here. So if you're offended by nudity, uh, it might be time to tune out of the video right now. Uh, don't worry, we're not gonna do anything too, too gratuitous, but it is part of the usability here. Uh, so this is Make Human. Make Human actually started life as a Blender plugin and then it was spun off as a freeform plugin. And you basically use it to create and rig characters. And that's really, the usability here has got so easy. Like this is something if you created and customized your own character in any video game, you'll be able to use Make Human. And this is very similar to um, uh, Mixamo's Fuse software, uh, a little bit on the line of uh, Poser uh, or Daz Studio. Uh, so there are other human creation tools out there, but this is the only one I can think of that is actually completely free and open source. And as you see here, you start off with your main skeleton and just using a bunch of sliders, just like you would with any game creation. You pick your gender, so you can see the, the obvious effects there. Uh, I'll keep this relatively neutral again. Your age has a pretty profound effect. Again, we'll keep this pretty neutral. Your musculature, so we can make this guy a little bit bigger here. Let's actually make a dude, and we'll make him muscular. All right, uh, your height, your proportions, etc. your ethnicity, and then that's basically it. You're building out your basic um, structure very, very fast. Uh, next up, you can do some genital specific, or sorry, gender specific stuff, mostly about you know um, breasts and um, penises, etc. Uh, all based off the original choices you chose, uh, but they're all slider controlled. Uh, I'll just move ahead from that, and then we got the same thing. We can change up the head shape, size, angle, etc. All just typical sliders. Stuff you're used to, if you, again, you've used a, a video game character creator, you've got a pretty good idea of what you're dealing with here. Oh, same thing, you can modify the torsos, the arms and legs. You can randomize everything we just created, which we can do this a couple times, and just kind of quickly and rapidly create a base character. Why, actually they all make some pretty awful results. Uh, but that is the effect of randomizing them. Uh, kind of, okay, we'll go with what I just created. Pretty awful here. All right, and you can modify some, oh, so you can do some measurements, etc. So the next step we're gonna come in here, we got the, ge um, the geometries that we can apply to our particular character. So what we can do is give some basic clothing. So if we wanna put a fedora on there and some male clothing, there we go. So we've just created a dressed male character with uh, some shoes on now. Uh, you can use the left mouse button to orbit the camera around, middle mouse button to zoom in and out. So and hold down, sorry, middle mouse button, uh, scroll wheel in and out, and then middle mouse button down to pan. And then uh, you can also modify the eyeballs. Uh, you can add some hair. Give this guy a bob underneath the, here, let's 
go back, give him some short hair. Actually, let's go back to none because it's interfering with our fedora. You modify the teeth, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, the tongue. It's pretty straightforward, actually. You can come in here, uh, modify the uh, skin, the so basic skin tone of your character that you're creating. So, for example, if we were dealing with um, old Asian female, it will update the skin accordingly. Um, middle aged Asian male, middle aged African female, etc. Um, so you can quickly and easily change between the different skin tones that you want. Uh, you can see down here at the bottom the different uh, that our randomness gave us. So we've got 30% female, 69.29% male, 61 years old, 49.55% musculature, 111% uh, height, and his total height is just under 2 meters. Uh, so obviously that was the result of our randomization. And at any time we could actually go back to modeling and uh, you know change any of that. So if we wanted to make this guy more masculine, we can. And you'll see it will update down here on the fly. We can also make him younger, should we wish, and it updates on the fly. All right, so back over here. So that was the, the various different pieces of you know accessories or add-ons that we could add. And again, we got into the um, materials. So we can change up the various different textures that are applied to them. And then and here's some of the newer functions um, up in x-ray mode. Uh, you can pick how you want your posing or animation to go. So we're going to uh, anim um, sorry, for skeleton. So this is the armature that's going to be the underlying model here. And you can pick the different options. You can see how they uh, the bone structure and the amount of detail. So this guy, you can see he has a ton of bones in the face for doing facial animation. Same thing, just in this case, no toes. So has toes, no toes, or if you're dealing real time for games and you want things to be much more straightforward, there is now a game rig, which is very, very cool, except for we're not gonna have the full uh, facial rigging that we had on the other option. But that's all that's involved in setting up an armature for your model. So this guy gets ready for animation in whatever package you wanna use them now, which is very, very handy. And we can also do a default pose. So quite often what you would start with is like a T pose. So various different game engines expect a T pose as your starting point. You've probably, if you've done any 3D work, you're very familiar with this pose, but you can simply pick whichever starting pose you want for exporting out. Most of the time, again, it's going to be a T pose or an idle pose, uh, but you can now set a default pose. And again, it's just a matter of picking uh, from these, and there's a nice previewed icon available for each option. Uh, at the same time, we can also now set expressions. So you can set crying, disgust, etc. Uh, I'll go back to none though because we I don't actually have any bones in this guy's face so we're not gonna be able to change his uh, face once we actually have export this guy uh, so that is as all that's really involved in creating your character here you can go ahead and create a render of him uh, not really that exciting uh, there's various settings you can set for this guy you can switch the language and the language support for make human is actually shockingly robust with English Arabic Chinese Czech Dutch Estonian French German Hungarian Italian Japanese Korean I don't know what master is. Uh, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Swedish, and Turkish UI text all available. Uh, so that's definitely very cool. Um, you can toggle your camera angles up here. Nice and simple. Uh, you got uh, switch between wireframe, turn the pose on and off, etc. Uh, it's all very straightforward. There's actually no explanation involved. You can grab this guy and immediately use them. So this is just the logging. Uh, we can do a mix up of the expressions so we can change his face. Uh, let's just go ahead and show you. So, if I want to raise his eyebrow, so you see, eyebrow up, eyebrow down. Very, very, very powerful program. It, it actually shocks me, but what really got me with the whole thing that they've done here is this is just so much more uh, accessible. It's so easy to use now. It was never quite this simple before. And then finally, you've got some help. Uh, so you can, it mostly just links off to web pages, etc., that are available for you. And that's it. Really, that was done. We created this guy. We created this character. The final thing you want to go ahead and do is just export it. Uh, you can pick the options, uh, the orientation of your particular game engine or modeling application. Some are Y up, some are Z up. Uh, so you can pick it accordingly right here. Uh, over here, you can pick your various different uh, formats. Your two biggest industry ones are DAE and FBX, while for straight out meshes, wave uh, wavefront object format is there as well. Plus, kind of oddly enough, there's Ogre 3D game engine file format in here, as well as um, Stereolithic. Stereo Graphy format, um, and you can also export out the um, uh, 
animation, uh, the rig out for uh, BV8, which is a standard um, motion capturing data format, which is supported by just about every 3D application out there that supports animation. And you can export out the light map or the UV map for this particular character, and that's it. You just basically pick which one you want it to do. Uh, you pick where you want it to go, or you pick here to actually pick some place for it to go. Uh, my guy, and done. Exported as DAE, and that can, that can now be used in Blender, Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, Moto, etc. Uh, very cool, very robust, very simple program for the most part, if I'm honest. Uh, but it's definitely one that you should consider adding to your toolbox, especially if you are working on character development. Uh, it's a starting point. It gets you a rigged character that you can now bring into your application of choice and just create the animations you need. I actually wouldn't be surprised if that comes in the future, that they'll start actually adding some kind of animation support directly in here. Uh, it's it's got to be coming, uh, but as of yet, it's not here, which I actually, again, do find a little bit shocking, especially because they've got all the facial stuff in the, on the ready to go. But I imagine that's probably going to come in a future version. As it stands, if you need to create characters, you can create fully textured, uh, fully rigged, animated character, animatable characters from this program for completely for free in seconds. So if this isn't already on your radar, definitely go ahead and download this guy. Uh, it's a very valuable tool and one that you should be aware of. So once again, Make Human just had their 1.1 release today. You got nothing to lose for trying it out. It's available on basically every important platform. It's completely free. And as you saw, it's quite powerful, quite responsive, and just cool. Uh, so that was that. Hope you enjoyed that. Found that useful. See y'all later.